I'm Jane McGonigal, and we're here in Los Angeles to talk about the amazing futures and possibly scary futures that await us if we spend more and more time immersed in virtual worlds. My big project right now is a game called Super Better, which I created when I had a mild traumatic brain injury that I had a hard time healing from. And I thought I could use my game design superpowers to get my brain creating positive emotions, make it easier for me to get the help from friends and family. And um, it worked so well that I turned it into an app and a web service and we've been doing clinical trials on it. And this spring, we'll have the first results from a randomized control study using the game to treat depression and anxiety. And it looks good. So I'm um, very excited about making games that can help people solve their real life problems, be happier and healthier, and uh, do it through games. I'm really excited because a lot of the indie game developers I know are thinking about the impact that their games have on players' real lives, and even just starting to think about what emotions does this game provoke, and looking at the science of how an emotion we feel in a game will actually stay with us for 24 hours, and even just starting at that basic level of, I can change how someone feels for a whole day, and what will they be like in the real world if they bring the emotion of curiosity, or the emotion of optimism, or pride to their real lives. I think that's actually the great starting place for indie games to start to really make a difference in people's real lives. We've only seen a few of the big global games start to embrace real world problem solving. Facebook's actually, I think, been the best platform where you can see some big social games. Uh, for example, when Farmville was raising funds for relief in Haiti after the earthquake. Um, there's a great game called Half the Sky now where things you do in the game will actually result in real books being sent to real girls in Pakistan so they can learn real medicine being sent to girls in India so they can stay healthy um, when their families wouldn't ordinarily invest in their health. And I think Facebook might be a, a really great place for us to connect you know, these big popular games with global action and, and to have that action spread virally through our social network. So when I play the game and I'm changing the world, you can get inspired and change the world too. I'd love to see some of the other AAA developers get involved, but for now, Facebook seems to be where the action's at. Everybody's interested in having a positive impact on the real world with games. So check out Games for Change. There's a festival every year. You can win awards for games. You can win scholarships. You can find out all the cool games that other people are making and play them so you can change the world when you play. My advice to everybody starting out in game design is don't be afraid of the power of games. Don't let anybody tell you that games are escapist entertainment because the relationships we build when we play games last outside the games, the emotions we feel last, the skills that we develop, the ways we change our brain, they all continue with us after we play. So don't be afraid of that. Lean into it, take advantage of it, and think of yourself as somebody who is literally changing people's lives with every game you make. And with great power comes great responsibility, and game designers should own that responsibility.